could we see Cody Rhodes return to AEW? Scott Damore fired from TNA, my review of AEW Dynamite. I am Luke Cohen and this is the WrestleTalk News. Support WrestleTalk! It's been a mad week for WWE. Cody Rhodes announced on SmackDown that he wouldn't be facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania despite that being the long-term plan. The Rock looked like he was going to face Roman instead, and the fan backlash to it was so strong that WWE had to censor Rocky Sucks chants from Raw as the hashtag WeWantCody grew stronger and stronger. Some of this is being reported as a big worky muck work face. Other reports say that WWE are considering all of their options ahead of today's press conference where we will get all the answers. But that is not what Sean Ross Sapp is going to be talking about. With reports noting that Cody could have potentially been lied to about the plans for WrestleMania, it seems his future in WWE isn't quite as clear as it once was. On Fightful's The Hump, Sean Rossap was asked about the chances of Cody leaving WWE and returning to AEW. Now, usually we would pull a quote here and you would have to listen to me say it, but I think it's important that you see the clip to get the full context of how this question was answered. You should also go and watch the show in full because it's great. Do you see Cody ever going back to AEW? Three weeks ago, I would have said no. I'm not going to say yes now, but I'll say anything is possible. But it was it was an adamant no as of a couple months ago. It was a foregone conclusion he was going to resign. It should be made clear this is not a report. This is not a Fightful Select $5 news story. It's mostly just speculation. However, it should also be noted that Dave Meltzer had previously reported that Cody Rhodes signed a new contract in October of last year. However, SRS reported that while the contract had been offered, Cody Rhodes had yet to sign it. When asked about this answer on Twitter, Sean Ross Sapp replied, it's wrestling and I've seen the most insane sh** happen over the last five years and will never call anything impossible. Do you think that Cody Rhodes could go back to AEW? Let me know in the comments down below. Personally, I don't think it's gonna happen. But then I also said the same thing about him leaving AEW, and I am historically wrong about a lot of things. But on this one, I'm pretty sure that he's gonna stay in WWE. Right? Speaking of insane things that are happening in wrestling right now, Impact Wrestling successfully rebranded to TNA with their Hard to Kill pay-per-view in January. Fan hype surrounding the promotion keeps on growing. TNA even had their Knockouts champion, Jordan Grace, in the Royal Rumble. It's Jordan Grace! It's Jordan Grace! And the man at the heart of all of that was Scott Damore, the president of TNA Wrestling, who, by all accounts, was very well liked backstage by talent and crew. One talent even noted to Fightful Select that he saves TNA, which is why the news that he's been fired has come as such a shock. Damore has been replaced by Anthony Sissoni from Anthem. The reason for his firing has been given to both PW Insider and Fightful from Anthem themselves, who say they want to ensure TNA has a greater tie to Anthem day to day moving forward. Our own Tempest was contacted by someone from TNA who said no one knew it was coming except higher ups. No talent or crew. Scott Damore knows wrestling literally on the deepest possible levels. He knows every indie talent in every town. No idea what's next. This firing was reportedly not well received by those backstage in TNA, according to PW Insider. A video call was held to let everyone know what was occurring, but Anthem officials reportedly contradicted their own press release by saying Damore stepped down rather than being fired, which is actually what happened. Since he only reportedly read a pre-prepared statement, but did not take questions. Fightful Select confirmed that talents were not happy about this news and said they weren't given a reason for what happened beyond what was in the press release. They also report there was a second call headed up by Tommy Dreamer and Gail Kim, which did not go down well either, with House of Wrestling reporting that Kim had to ask those on the call to mute their microphones as it was becoming chaotic. Initially, House of Wrestling had been told that Dreamer offered those on the call a chance to get out of their contracts if they were really unhappy about the news, but they have since learned that wasn't the case. One person told them that any releases from this news would be based upon how important the wrestlers are to the company. Jordan Grace, 
for example, is someone that TNA will do everything they can to keep hold of. It's been a crazy week of news, and there's even more news on WrestleTalk.com today, including John Laurinaitis' lawyer issuing a statement of vice claiming that WWE executives knew about the allegations surrounding the late Ashley Mazzaro. Despite WWE issuing a statement in 2019 after Mazzaro's death, claiming that they did it. The full details of that, plus loads more, is all on WrestleTalk.com. Before we get into the AEW review, however, here's a clip from this Friday's edition of Survival Series to whet your appetite for a new round. F is for F, 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 f off me. Nothing's happening. G, G is for G Get your hand off my penis! H is for Have you considered therapy? I is for I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! Jay said Jeff Jarrett. But now it's time for my review of AEW Dynamite, aka the match of the year contender slash big announcement slash sting title win edition of AEW Dynamite in about five minutes. This very stacked show opened with what is arguably the hottest thing, the third encounter between Hangman Page and Swerve Strickland, the winner of which would become the number one contender to Samoa Joe's world title. These two already have had two match of the year contenders in 2023, the second one of which ended up coming second in our WrestleTalk podcast match of the year awards. So expectations were high going into this next chapter. And boy howdy did it not disappoint! The action started off incredibly hot, as did the crowd, and they maintained that pace for the rest of the bout. These two are so crisp together. Highlighted it a moment when Hanger did a moonsault to the floor and rolled through because Swerve moved, who then in turn rolled through into a flatliner of his own. It was so seamless. Swerve ducked a buckshot and hit one of his own for an awesome near fall. He got his feet on the ropes following a buckshot lariat from Page and survived a countout attempt by Hanger just getting back in at the nine. Swerve awkwardly landed on his ankle but fought through the pain to hit a dead eye through a table on the outside and hit the JML driver for the one, two, time limit draw. It was timed to perfection, executed to perfection, and was just absolutely perfect. An exceptional pro wrestling match. But there's just one more thing, and it's not that one table that fell down. You might have noticed in my recap there that Swerve sounded like the valiant babyface while Hangman Page was the heel. And this is something that the crowd also felt, cheering Swerve whilst being mixed often booing Hangman Adam Page. Page sold this throughout the match like it was weighing heavy on his mind, and it was all clearly by design, as Swerve got on the mic after the match to ask for five more minutes, and Page said no. All you had to do was beat me, and you couldn't. I was right all along. You cannot beat me without the Mogul Embassy. Tony Schiavone announced on the house mic that Tony Khan made it official it will be a triple threat for Revolution, something that Samoa Joe was less than thrilled about in a backstage interview. Hangman Page left the arena shouting, he can't beat me. I I did not see a double turn coming. Not only because it's hard to imagine the blue-eyed babyface that fought against the elite to capture the world heavyweight title being booed by AEW fans, but also because Swerve invaded this man's home and cut a promo on his sleeping child. And yet somehow, somehow, they've done it. And they did it so, so well. Tony Storm beat Red Velvet while Deanna Perazzo did commentary, and they announced Orange Cassidy will be defending his international championship against Tomohiro Ishii on Collision this Saturday. What? And continue the tease of tension between best friends and Trent. And if that all wasn't awesome enough, here comes some good lucha thing. The Blackpool Combat Club are so damn cool. And they had a corking trios match against the lads from CMLL, which put some great shine on the invading luchadors. And in an interesting finish, the ref nearly got bumped and Claudio Castagnoli used this chance to hit a low blow during a spine buster for the win. An excellent match, but if you want to make this invading force look credible, I think they should have won here, even if the low blow is done to protect them. More of CMLL got in the ring after the match, but they were chased off by 2.0 and Christopher Daniels. And again, if you want to present this invading force as a serious invading force, I wish the backup for the Blackpool Combat Club was more impressive. The Undisputed Kingdom beat up Chucky backstage and Tony Khan appeared on screen to make his next big announcement, which had already been announced earlier in the day by Ticketmaster. AEW will be doing a show from the TD Gardens in Boston in March, and the show will be called Big 
business. You will love big business. It is the American way. TK hyped this as much as you would expect, but in traditional AEW style, the graphic is spelled Boston wrong. There's only one S in Boston, you silly fools. <laughs> I sure hope someone got fired for that blunder. That isn't even an S, it's a dollar sign. Wait a minute. Yes, this will likely be the home of the AEW debut for Mercedes Monet, the former Sasha Banks in WWE. Fightful Select report that Monet has actually been on the AEW payroll since the start of the year, and there was consideration to announcing or debuting Mercedes, but instead the decision to pass that on to the TD Garden. Because of the Ticketmaster leak earlier in the day, I had expected TK to announce Mercedes' debut as part of this big announcement because what he announced was news that we already sort of knew. But it also lends to the idea that Mercedes Monet won't be the only debut at that show with big business and all of its heavy money theming could be an all out 2021 situation where we get not one, not three, but two new AEW signings. Cody Rhodes AEW return confirms. Takeshita beat Chris Jericho with his own Walls of Jericho after some Screwy interference from Don Callis. It's funny because Callis used a screwdriver. Look, I wish I could be more excited about this, but I've seen Jericho put over powerhouse Hobbs and Action Andretti Strong and those didn't lead to much. And the main event saw Sting and Darby Allen beat Ricky Starks and Big Bill for the AEW Tag Team Championships in a very fun Tornado Tag match. Sting continued to celebrate the return of TNA by wrestling in a t-shirt and brawling through the crowd, hitting an awesome big dive from an entranceway. The best spot of the match for me though was Big Bill catching a diving Darby Allen and seamlessly hitting a boss man slam. It was so so good! Sting hit the Scorpion Death Drop on Starks for the win. Sting's got other kids that aren't just Darby and they got in the ring after the match, but all four of them were attacked by the Young Bucks in white suits. The white suits were such an effective choice as the blood from Darby Allen stained them and they hit their renamed finish, the EVP Trigger. A very good old school heat angle. Nothing flashy, just weapons, blood and their finish. Excellent. And it capped off an excellent episode of AEW Dynamite. The opener is a genuine match of the year contender. The finale was a real feel good moment and the trios match was awesome fun. This week's Dynamite is four out of five. Hopefully the Mercedes Monet debut won't end up on a list like this, but do check out our latest Parts Fun Known list covering wrestlers who peaked with their debuts. I gave a lot of input into the Taz entry.